I was diagnosed around five months back and it's been four and a half months since my surgery. I'm recovering very well. So very happy to talk about my own experiences and also talk about what's, what's, you know, what are the different uh, reasons and what, how, how, uh, how you can detect the breast cancer early. So according to the government data, on an average, nearly four out of 10 women who are diagnosed with breast cancer succumb to it. Uh, this is the data from the last year, 2021. But I also want to add that things don't look as, they are not as bad as they look because they are, there are also a lot of breast cancer survivors who are leading very good and perfectly healthy lives. Uh, the only thing which is the most important when it comes to breast cancer is early detection. If you can detect the cancer early, you can nip it in the butt absolutely easily. And uh, breast cancer is also one of the, I think it is, it is the most prevalent cancer in women today. Uh, followed by cervical cancer. Uh, so I'm not the only person who's going to be talking about this. I'm going to be joined by Dr. Kanchan Kaur, who is, uh, she's also somebody who's, you know, over these months become really close to me. And uh, uh, I think every time that I've hit a roadblock in my recovery journey, I've been like singing her throughout and telling her doc what to do, tell me what's next. So uh, Dr. Kanchan Kaur is specialist oncoplastic plastic surgeon. Uh, oncoplastic breast surgeon and a senior director at Medanta Hospitals and she completed her training in London, New York and Paris. She also helped set up the Breast Services Institute at Medanta Medicity in Gurgaon. Dr. Kaur regularly contributes to emedicine.com and is a tutor for surgical courses at the Royal College of Surgeons London. She's also passionately involved in breast cancer awareness campaigns in India and abroad. Dr. Kanchan, I'm really happy to see you today. Very warm welcome to you. Likewise, Chavi, it's so lovely to be back. Five months ago, we were talking about this, right? And then, uh, you know, going through your journey and so proud of you, really. If we have more women like you and we take away the fear that is attached to the word breast cancer, I think at least in my lifetime, we'll see a difference in the stage at which this disease presents in our country. And, you know, like you said, four out of 10 women succumb. It is actually true. Actually, you know, the way we turn it around statistically is that one in two women, sadly, will lose their life to breast cancer within five years of diagnosis in India, which is completely the opposite of the West, where 80 percent survive and they don't lose their lives to breast cancer. And out of the entire session that we do today and out of all awareness sessions that I do, I tell everybody, if you remember just one thing, other than obviously our brilliant smiles, Chavi, <laughs> if you remember anything, just remember early detection, early detection. There is no other word that is more important, um, you know, in the field of breast cancer. Yes, absolutely. And I think while we talk about statistics, we are talking about the survival rate and we are talking about how many people don't make it. Uh, I think also, I don't know the statistics, but a vast majority of women who survive cancer also deal with a lot of emotional struggle and mental struggle. And, you know, all of those things also tend to play a big role. So, you know, while we dive into the session, the first question that I want to ask you is that, is there a reason for breast cancer to happen? And uh, is there something that we do that can increase the chances of getting breast cancer? Okay. So, um, you know, for breast cancer, unlike things like oral cancer, where you know chewing tobacco causes it, or things like cervical cancer, where you know a virus called human papilloma virus causes it. So, you know, you can take definitive preventive steps. Sadly, for breast cancer, there is no one definite cause. Only in about 5 to 10% women, there is a strong family history with a genetic basis, which is identifiable, like it was in Angelina Jolie, the BRCA gene. So, you know, that is a very small subset of patients in whom we can identify a gene. And if we identify that genetic abnormality before the cancer develops, we can take definitive steps to prevent cancer from developing. Okay, but for the sad majority, there is no one single cause that leads to breast cancer. But we do know it is a lifestyle disease. And that is why the Western world sees more of breast cancer. And in India, 
definitely our metropolitan cities, Delhi, Mumbai, Bangalore, see the maximum number of breast cancers. So it has got something to do with a very complex interplay of environmental factors and how your body reacts to those environmental factors. You know, like sometimes two identical twins living in the same environment, one might get cancer, the other might not. So it's also, you know, how your body responds to these genetic changes. So if we look at causes which are theoretically taught to us as medical students and which we tell everybody, so not having had ch any child, uh, no childbirth, no pregnancy, having children late, not breastfeeding your kids, and also things like for postmenopausal women, obesity, these are associated with increased risk of breast cancer. Things like excessive alcohol consumption are also being linked to increased risk of breast cancer. And if you have been exposed as a child to radiotherapy to the chest wall, like some kids who get lymphomas, if we, if we do that, or for postmenopausal women who are on hormone replacement therapy for a long duration of time. So those are the identifiable factors that we know may increase the risk of breast cancer. But Chavi, I can tell you, I see women who have 10 kids, who have breastfed all kids, who will still get breast cancer. So because we don't know in whom it will happen and why it will happen, then your best bet is to know how to detect it early, God forbid, if it happens. Absolutely. I'm, I'm one of those women. I have two kids. Uh, I, had, uh, I had both my pregnancies at a good time and I breastfed both my kids. I lead a good lifestyle. I believe so. I'm, I'm a fitness freak. I'm a health freak. Yeah. So I eat well. I do all the things right and I don't have any family history of breast cancer but still I got it and uh, I think the only thing that saved my life like you said is early detection but uh, you know I've been asked uh, by a lot of women I get these messages nowadays on uh, different social media platforms women feel that if they wear tight bras does it cause breast cancer so, so Chavi you know this is a very big myth and I get asked this all the time tight bra black bra underwired bras padded bras they have nothing to do with your risk of breast cancer okay mm -hmm. the only thing and i want to mention this here is that as indian women we have taken on to wearing the victoria secret <laughs> lingerie and that is not suited to our environment all the time so what i right. am seeing is because of these synthetic tight bras women getting more and more breast infections because obviously, you know, the, the, the sweating the breathing and all yeah. of that. Yeah. So bras do not increase or decrease your risk of developing breast cancer. And what about smoking? Is smoking also a factor for breast cancer? So, you know, till about many years ago, we used to think that smoking is not linked to breast cancer. Like we never even knew that alcohol would be linked to breast cancer. But now there are more and more data that suggests that uh, the hormone sensitive type of breast cancer may be uh, linked to uh, women, you know, who excessively smoke. But I can also tell you that smoking leads to a very heightened risk of infections in the breast. And the worst infections in the breast that we see are in women smokers. And also with cancers, for a woman who smokes, her risk of developing breast cancer may be 10% higher than the normal woman. And if she continues to smoke after a diagnosis of cancer, her risk of dying due to the breast cancer is about 30% higher. So if you get cancer and you're still smoking, then that's not a good idea. Okay. So yes, cigarette smoke is to be definitely condoned. Do not smoke. I say at all platforms, it leads to all sorts of diseases and breast cancer is linked to it. Absolutely. And, uh, and if that doesn't uh, convince you enough, smoking also causes a lot of inflammation in every part of your body. So yeah. it can cause a lot of other problems which are not cancerous, yeah. but it can be, they can be lifelong. It, it ruins your skin. It makes your skin dull. It makes you age faster. I mean, come on, there are so many. But Chavi, you know what? It keeps you thin, and that is why women who smoke refuse to give up smoking because they put on weight, and that's very sad, you know. And that's oh, that's not true. That's not true. That is also a myth. It's a myth. Smoking makes you thin. It's a myth. Yeah. It's yeah, just exactly. initially. That's what I'm saying. So a lot of women latch on to that. They think that if they give up, you know, the cigarette smoking, it leads to putting on weight. And that's the resistance I've seen with so many women who refuse to give up smoking. 
So, you know, a very easy thing to do uh, to, for that is just start chewing gum for some time and it will take care of your really? cravings which are unnecessary. Yeah. Okay, coming back to breast cancer, doctor, tell me what is a good way to do self-examination? Okay, so Chavi, I think this is a very, very, very important topic, you know, because when I see a woman coming to my clinic with uh, a lump in her breast, which is the size of a football, but her eyebrows are nicely done and her makeup is in place, it makes me sad because she has been trained to look nice, but all her life, but she has not been trained to be aware of the symptoms of disease in her body. So I firmly believe that every girl from the age of 16, 17, 18, whenever she develops breasts, should know how to self-examine. The best time to self-examine is after your periods have finished, maybe five to six days after your periods have finished, because at that time, the breast is soft, is not as tender as it is before a period. And for postmenopausal women, it's a good idea to put an alarm for one day in the month when they're going to self-examine. So self-examination starts by looking at yourself in the mirror. And Chavi, I have been asked this question umpteen number of times. Do I have to remove my clothes when I look at myself in the mirror? <laughs> Honestly, that's not a joke. So yes, remove your clothes, stand in front of the mirror, put your hands above your head, on your waist and push into your waist. And when you are doing that, keep looking at the surface of your breast. If you see any area getting pulled inwards, like dimpling, like, you know, when somebody smiles and they get a dimple on, your, on the cheek, sometimes lumps in the breast can lead to pulling in of the skin of the breast. So look for any dimpling, look for any change in the shape of or contour of the breast. Be aware about nipples that get pulled in if you do that and look for any ulcers or rashes. So any ulcers or rashes on the skin of the breast, if they don't heal within a week, 10 days of treatment by your general physician, please seek out an oncologist. I really want to make this very clear. Okay. So after you've seen yourself, the next you have to do is feel yourself. So it's look, see and feel. So when you feel yourself, you could either do that in the shower when you've applied soap on your body or you could lie down on the bed with a pillow under your shoulders. It helps to push the breasts forward and it's easier to examine them. And actually lying down on the bed and examining is a better way to do it rather than standing up. So the breast that you are examining, say the left breast, you put that hand behind your head and with the other hand you examine your breast. Now, the biggest mistake that women make when they're feeling their breast is that say if this is the breast, they will hold the breast between the thumb and four fingers and check. And what happens? You feel your milk glands. And that's very scary because then everything feels like a lump. So you'll stop then and there. Don't do that. The best way to examine is to use the flat of your hand on the surface of your breast. Three fingers, run it from outside inwards towards the nipple with deep pressure okay if there is a lump inside it will hit your fingers now please remember the breast is not like soft cotton candy the breast is like a packet of frozen peas it is meant to be lumpy so a breast when you run your hand on the surface of the breast you'll feel it feels lumpy and if there is a lump inside which is separate, you will always feel it. And believe me, if you know what is normal for you and you have regularly self-examined, we see women coming to clinic having had detected lumps as small as one to two centimeters in size. Okay. Mm -hmm. So after you felt yourself, press your nipple to look for discharge. Yellow, white and green discharge is normal. But blood-stained discharge or watery discharge that looks like green tea is not normal. And please remember, even one episode of blood stained or watery discharge must be brought to the attention of your doctor. We hear it so often, and then when they come, by the time they come, things have increased. So even one episode of a spot of discharge, please make sure you see your doctor. For women whose nipples have always pointed outwards, if they point inwards, that is again a sign of something wrong. Some women are born with inverted nipples. Okay, so then obviously then their nipples going in is nothing to worry about. So please remember 
that any lump in the breast, especially a lump that is painless, I hear it so often in clinic. I felt a lump. It didn't hurt. I thought it was normal. So please remember any lump in the breast, especially those that are painless lumps, could be worrisome. Do not self-diagnose. Please go to a doctor. So, uh, doctor, you think uh, somebody like me, who's a breast cancer survivor, should also do an examination? Absolutely. See, what happens is that you're going to have regular checkups with your doctors, right? So the first two years or so, you might see your doctor every three months or six months. And because this is a time when most women are so scared because they've just come out of all the treatments, it's okay if you're not examining. OK, but after that, when the doctor starts to space out your follow ups, say if they become six monthly or they become once a year, then obviously you have to get back to self-examining once a month. Also, remember, women who have had surgery and radiotherapy for breast cancer may continue to feel hardness at the site of the surgical scar. And they always then worry that maybe the cancer has come back. Always get it checked out by your doctor because everybody heals differently and some women may make tight lumps after a surgery which are not cancerous lumps but are scars so uh, while we are talking about uh, uh, self examination i think it's important for me to say that i was also one of these uh, one of those women who have never self examined and i was sitting with three lumps in my breasts one of which was cancerous and one of that the cancerous lump was a fairly new lump uh, the other two uh, I had been living with ever since I've had breasts. So uh, not everybody's as lucky as I have been. I actually had a gym injury and I went to, uh, you know, get that checked. And we found the, the lump which, which had been sitting there like a ticking time bomb. So self-examination is the first step. What else can we do, doctor, to check? So, yeah, so before um, I move on, and because you mentioned something very important, so a lot of women, up to 30% women, have lumps in their breasts which are not cancers. These are either water-filled lumps, which are called cysts, or these are solid lumps that we call fibroadenomas. Now, a lot of times what happens is that women who have fibroadenomas may feel that, you know, if they check themselves and they find a lump, they might presume it is a fibroadenoma again, okay? And I always say that in these women's breasts, it's that Sheraya, Sheraya scenario. Because mm -hmm. what happens is that they keep thinking, Are, mere to pani ki banti hai. Are I keep making fibroadenomas. So always remember, even if you know that you have lumps in your breast, which are non-cancerous, if you feel a new lump, make sure you get it checked out by your doctor rather than presuming that you have a tendency to make fibroadenomas and this is just another fibroadenoma. So that was a very important topic. So self-examination like that, Shavi. So you start young and you do it throughout your life. Okay. You yeah. may just, okay. just, 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 just want to cut you there and ask you, yeah. what is a fibroadenoma? Fibroadenoma. on its own? No. So fibroadenomas are non-cancerous lumps in the breast, which generally form in younger girls as their breasts are developing. And um, some may have only one. And others may have so many that we are not even able to count them. So as long as the ultrasound suggests it's a fibroadenoma and the needle biopsy proves it's a fibroadenoma, we don't always need to action upon them. Because small fibroadenomas can be safely left in the breast. They do not convert into cancers. However, if the fibroadenoma is increasing in size, or the patient is too worried about having the fibroadenoma in the breast, then we remove them. But removing a fibroadenoma does not take away the tendency of you to make more. Okay, so these are non-cancerous lumps, which must be kept under some sort of check checkup, depending on, you know, how often your doctor feels necessary for you to have these done. Okay, so actually, actually, this was also a question from one of the viewers, uh, Habilal Maji, who asked fibroadenoma. Ke mein tha. And uh, while we move on, doctor, I just want to tell all the viewers that if you have any questions in your mind, you want to ask, so please note and drop our messages. Mein drop kar and uh, after a point, I'll start coming to the audience questions as well. Okay, so now you were talking about what else can be done. So self-breast examination we just discussed. So, you know, I want to 
say it a hundred million times. Every woman must do it. Do not forget. You may forget to go to the parlor, forget to do your eyebrows. Please, please do not forget to check your breasts. Luckily, they are external organs. Luckily, it's easy to feel them and find out. So that's the first thing. Then after that, from the age of 40 onwards, we strongly recommend that you start having tests for your breast, even if you don't have a problem. Now, that is where we face the biggest roadblock. So in the Western world, in the US, from the age of 40 onwards, women start having screening mammograms. So the word screening means that we do a test when you're normal. We are trying to screen you for disease, like your suitcases get screened for bombs and, you know, pistols when you go to the airport. It's, it's you know, we presume every breast has a lump unless proven otherwise. So you get your screening done from the age of 40 onwards and your doctor will decide whether it should be done once every year or whether it should be done once every two years. A little statistic here, in the Western world, breast cancer peaks. In the, in the fifth and sixth decade, that is more and more women get breast cancer when they're in their 50s and 60s. But sadly in India, breast cancer peaks a decade earlier. So we see our maximum number of breast cancers in the age group of 40s, which is actually sad. So what I feel, and I know a lot of doctors might not agree with me on this, but if you have access to a good mammogram facility and I must reiterate that Shavi because for you to have a mammogram please do not walk into any random mammogram center it should be done by an expert radiology center because a wrongly done and a wrongly reported mammogram is more harmful than not having a mammogram okay so if you feel a lump and you get a mammogram and you're told it is normal Please make sure you see your oncologist because 10% cancers can be missed on a mammogram. So all lumps may not be seen on a mammogram. But having had said that, from the age of 40 onwards, a screening mammogram once every year or once every two years, depending on how often your doctor thinks it's important. And also in women who have a strong family history, we recommend frequent MRI scans of the breast. Please do not randomly start getting MRI scans, which we see for women if they have a problem. Somebody tells them, oh, mammogram is radiation, so don't do radiation, a, a test that has radiation. So please do not fall for that myth. This is a WhatsApp message doing the rounds that mammograms give too much radiation. They lead to cancer, so don't do mammogram. And there's so much resistance to doing mammograms. Mammograms save lives because they detect cancer early. But sadly, in our country, because we still do not have the infrastructure to do screening mammograms for all women, your best bet is regular physical checks and making sure you get your, you know, any issues sorted out by specialist doctors so that nothing is missed. Now, new and new technologies are coming around and there are things like thermal scanning and, you know, handheld breast cancer detection tools, none of which is gold standard just as yet. OK, so I, I'm not going to go into the detail of those. So to detect cancer early, self-awareness, self-examination, mammograms from the age of 40 onwards and when your doctor recommends an MRI for women who have a strong family history. So you should start screening five years earlier than the age at which your uh, relative had breast cancer. So if your relative had breast cancer at the age of 40, say your sister had breast cancer at the age of 40, your screening should start from age 35 onwards. Okay. So what exactly is the mammogram? So a mammogram is an x-ray of the breast. Okay. In this, there is a glass plate on which the breast is placed and another glass plate presses the breast. I, I'm sure whoever's listening to me and has never had a mammogram would go, ouch. <laughs> so, so yeah, it is uncomfortable to have a mammogram, but it is not extremely painful. So what happens is some women's threshold for pain is very low. So they have a mammogram and they come and tell all their friends, never go for a mammogram. It's excruciatingly painful. So I tell everybody, it's five seconds of discomfort or pain and a life saved if cancer is detected early, okay? So please do not get waved by somebody telling you that it's painful or it's radiation risk. So don't do a mammogram, that's all false. A mammogram is a simple X-ray without too much radiation exposure, which can pick up pre-cancer and which can pick up cancer the size of a rice grain. And at that stage, 
I can tell you cancer is curable. I'm not even using the word treatable. But you have to pick it up in stage zero, stage one to get the best outcomes. So uh, just uh, uh, asking really dumb questions here so that everybody understands Absolutely. whatever doubts they have in their mind. Mammograms say basically aapko jo bhi lumps hai, wo pata chalte hai. Ki cancerous lumps pata chalte hai. So mammogram se kya hota hai ki jab hum mammogram karte hai, usme lump dikhta hai. अब वो लंप कैंसर है या नहीं वो चीज अल्ट्रासाउंड और बायोप्सी कंफर्म करती है बट कई ऐसे कैंसर होते हैं जो मैमोग्राम को देखते ही समझ आ जाता है कि हाँ ये कैंसर है बट कॉन्फर्मेशन हमेशा नीडल बायोप्सी से होती है एंड छवि अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल हैव दिस मिथ कि सुई लगाने से कैंसर बढ़ेगा सुई लगाने से कैंसर फैलेगा एंड अ लॉट ऑफ पेशेंट डोंट वॉन्ट अ बायोप्सी अगेन अ बिग 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 मिथ सुई लगाने से कैंसर बढ़ता फैलता नहीं है जब तक हम उसमें सुई डाल के टुकड़ा निकाल के जांच नहीं करेंगे वी विल नॉट कंफर्म दैट दिस इज अ कैंसर देन हाउ विल बी ट्रीटेड प्रॉपर्ली and i also want to add here that uh, when my lump was detected i was also very against getting a biopsy because you know how we are hame hamesha lagta hai ki mujhe nahi ho sakta you know mujhe thodi cancer hoga wo to dusron ko hota hai and that's exactly what i also felt that i'm so fit and healthy it's not possible mujhe time nahi waste karna hai mujhe wo sab effort nahi lagana hai but i'm so glad that i did it because it was like black and white it was cancer you know thank you so uh, doctor cancer kaun se stage pe detect karne se it's curable or treatable is there is there such such a factor ko matlab kis tarah ke cancers hote hain jo curable hote hain so sabse pehle to you know when we say breast cancer everybody thinks ki wo ek hi type ka cancer hai aur uska ek hi type ka ilaj hoga because bahut baar kya hota hai if we tell somebody ki aapki chemo pehle honi hai So turn around and say, पर हमारे घर में तो हमारे मोहल्ले में किसी को कैंसर हुआ था उसका तो ऑपरेशन पहले हुआ इफ आई टेल समी आपको ब्रेस्ट बचा सकते हैं दिल टेल मी नहीं नहीं हमारे वहां पर तो दो लड़की लेडीज को कैंसर हुआ उनको तो ब्रेस्ट निकालने को बोला गया था सो प्लीज रिमेम्बर एवरी पेशेंट इज डिफरेंट ब्रेस्ट कैंसर के अलग टाइप्स हैं कुछ अच्छे स्वभाव के कैंसर होते हैं कुछ बहुत तेज स्वभाव के कैंसर होते हैं सो देर आर लेस अग्रेसिव एंड मोर अग्रेसिव कैंसर एंड वी हैव टू मेक योर ट्रीटमेंट प्लान डिपेंडिंग ऑन हाउ अग्रेसिव योर कैंसर इज नंबर वन नंबर टू व्हाट स्टेज यू प्रेजेंट एट तो बेस्ट केस सिनेरियो इज दैट यू डिटेक्टेड एट अ स्टेज वेर इट हैज नॉट इवन स्टार्टेड स्प्रेडिंग बियॉन्ड द डक्ट Which is called ductal carcinoma in situ, जो कि स्टेज जीरो कैंसर होता है जो कि दूध की नलियों में बनता है ductal carcinoma in the ducts. वो कई बार mammogram पे छोटे छोटे white dots जिसको हम calcification बोलते हैं उसको देख के पकड़ा जाता है So if it is detected at stage जीरो it is curable by surgery and in patients जिनकी breast बचाई गई है हम radiation और tablets add करते हैं The worst case scenario is a very aggressive cancer. जो कि फैल चुका है दैट इज स्टेज फोर नाउ आजकल ट्रीटमेंट्स बहुत अच्छी हो गई हैं एंड इफ समबडी इज बीन डिटेक्टेड इन स्टेज थ्री एंड स्टेज फोर आई डोंट वांट देम टू फील दिस हार्टन की देयर लाइफ इज एंडेड देयर आर स्टिल गुड ट्रीटमेंट्स इन स्टेज थ्री एंड स्टेज फोर बट प्लीज डोंट वेट दैट लॉन्ग टू कम बिकॉज छवि द एग्जाम्पल आई गिव एवरीबडी इज दैट कैंसर इज लाइक दीमक अगर आपके घर में एक दरवाजे पे छोटा सा टुकड़ा आपको दीमक का दिखा है जब तक आप उसको तुरंत इलाज नहीं करोगे योर होल हाउस विल बी फुल ऑफ दीमक बिफोर यू नो इट देन इट इज ऑलमोस्ट इम्पॉसिबल टू गेट रिड ऑफ इट एंड कैंसर इज एग्जैक्टली लाइक दैट तो द अर्लियर यू पिक इट अप द मोर द सक्सेस ऑफ ट्रीटमेंट रीचिंग हंड्रेड परसेंट इन स्टेज जीरो एंड स्टेज वन एंड देन गोइंग डाउन परसेंटेज वाइज एज यू गो अप विथ स्टेजेस स्टेज फोर बींग द लास्ट स्टेज वेन इट हैज स्प्रेड समवेर एल्स इन द बॉडी लाइक द लिवर लंग और बोन्स और इवन द ब्रेन फॉर दैट मैटर सो अर्ली डिटेक्शन अर्ली डिटेक्शन इज द ओनली की फॉर क्योर सो आई रिमेम्बर वेन आई हैड गॉन टू माई डॉक्टर द फर्स्ट विजिट आफ्टर द कैंसर वॉज कन्फर्म्ड so he told me ki chavi you have grade 1 cancer slow progressing hai so aap bahut lucky ho bahut jaldi phailega nahi theek hai you have time maine kaha theek hai okay doctor kitna time hai mere paas <laughs> he said itna time nahi hai ki matlab kya kuch kaam finish karna hai kya kuch thoda bahut kaam hai wo finish kar lo magar aisa nahi hai matlab 15 din le lo but it's it might not be some surgery is not like you need to do it right now get admitted but doesn't mean that take 6 months you know so just basically if you've detected it 
इट मे बी स्लो इट मे बी फास्ट जस्ट गेट रिड ऑफ इट या आई वॉन्ट टू एड समथिंग छवि बिकॉज कई बार क्या होता है जब पेशेंट आते हैं एंड यू नो देव डन सम बेसिक टेस्ट इन देर होम टाउन एंड दे कम टू आस and they know it is a cancer then when we tell them ab aap ye test karaiye we need to confirm this we need to confirm that they start getting this fear ki agar hum treatments late karenge to ye phail jayega so please oh. understand sometimes it takes us anywhere between one week to two weeks to even three weeks sometimes to confirm the entire stage and nature of cancer and that is very important before we start treatments so if your doctor feels it safe for you to wait that two weeks three weeks please don't panic because no doctor will delay your treatment knowingly okay so if you come to a doctor and he says you must wait five days before you get an mr कि आपको अभी पेट कराना है पेट सीटी या आपको बायोप्सी की रिपोर्ट का वेट करना है सो प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड दैट एंड वेट बट ऐसा भी नहीं है अच्छा ग्रेड वन कैंसर है माइल्ड कैंसर है द मोमेंट लाइक यू सेड दे हियर दैट दे लाइक अच्छा फिर बच्चों के एग्जाम खत्म हो जाए मेरे हस्बैंड की इंपॉर्टेंट मीटिंग है यू नो सो दैट इज ऑल्सो नॉट राइट बट ऑल्सो वॉट आई टेल पेशेंट इज दैट वेटिंग for say 2 weeks 3 weeks may not cause physical harm but it does cause a lot of mental harm and if you're being bothered by it then don't delay treatment do it early also i want to add here that when i was diagnosed i was uh, apart from being reached out by uh, people who were looking for you know support uh, cancer patients who were looking for support i was also reached out by cancer survivors you mm. know well meaning people who wanted to share their journeys with me who wanted to share their stories with me कि हमारे साथ ऐसा हुआ हमारे साथ ऐसा हुआ एंड मी एज अ पर्सन आई आई पर्टिकुलरली एंड उनके साथ जो हुआ वो उनके कैंसर पे डिपेंडेड डिपेंड था कि उनका कैंसर कैसा है इसलिए उनका ट्रीटमेंट ऐसा हुआ मे बी दे हैड अस्टेक्टमी मे बी दे हैड हाउ मेनी सेशन ऑफ कीमो एंड ऑल ऑफ दैट मेरे कैंसर में क्या ट्रीटमेंट होगा वो मेरे डॉक्टर्स डिसाइड करेंगे सो आई डेंट वांट टू मेंटली टॉर्चर माय सेल्फ बाय लिसनिंग टू हॉरर स्टोरी एंड आई वांट टू टेल ऑल द पीपल हु आर स्ट्रगलिंग विद एनी फॉर्म ऑफ कैंसर डोंट लिसन टू एनीथिंग जस्ट लिसन टू योर डॉक्टर योर डॉक्टर विल डिसाइड योर कोर्स ऑफ ट्रीटमेंट एंड दैट इज द बेस्ट थिंग दैट विल हैपन टू यू किसी और के साथ बुरा हुआ तो जरूरी नहीं है आपके साथ बुरा हो और किसी और के साथ अच्छा हुआ है वो भी जरूरी नहीं है कि आपके साथ अच्छा हो लेकिन आपका जो ट्रीटमेंट है वो आपका डॉक्टर डिसाइड करेगा एंड जस्ट स्टिक विद द डॉक्टर एंड डोंट कंफ्यूज योर माइंड विद एवरीबॉडी थैंक यू सो मच फॉर सेइंग दैट दैट इज माय बिगेस्ट पेट पीव सो एवरी टाइम आई हैव गिव अ डायग्नोसिस द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन आई गेट आस्क्ड इज डॉक्टर साहब हमें आप क्या प्रिकॉशन लेने चाहिए गेस व्हाट आई से Right. I say avoid well-meaning friends and family yeah. and cancer survivors. I actually say that. Yeah. And I've started telling people I will write it in your prescriptions because the moment you're diagnosed with cancer, every single person in your family and friend circle becomes an expert on cancer. And nobody will give you the right kind of advice because they're not experts, right? They Absolutely. are just hearing what they hear from others. mixed with their personal bias and they're going to end up confusing you so very good message from chavi please stick with what your doctor is saying once you're out of the entire treatment circle then open up but please do not get biased and that is why jab kisi ko cancer diagnose hota hai the worst thing to do is to go on google and search for cancer blogs because all those blogs come from personal biased experiences okay if you have to go on google please go on websites that are vetted by doctors and give you the right information do not go on personal blogs immediately after a diagnosis because your mind is so fragile you read one wrong thing that will stick in your mind 100 different reinforcements of sab theek ho jayega will not stick there so please remember that very good message from chavi there absolutely and doctor once uh, the treatment is over What are the side side effects? effects, chemo ke kya side effects? radiation, surgery, everything. So yes, side effects is a very slippery slope, right? So the moment we tell the patient, um, you know, ki we'll remove, say, somebody's been told total breast removal होगा and then we talk about reconstruction. Some women choose reconstruction, most don't. Okay, and then patients जिनकी surgery करके हम breast निकालते हैं and they don't have a reconstruction. initial one month or so that entire area is numb so they feel oh this area will be okay but slowly slowly muscle tightness starts surgical scars whether we've saved the breast removed the breast or reconstructed a breast can be painful can be tender to touch 
can have increased sensitivity. Sometimes after breast cancer surgeries, if we've had to remove lymph nodes from the armpit, there is a risk of swelling of the arm, which is called a lymphedema. Also, chemotherapy comes with its huge attendant risk of, you know, side effects, uh, change in taste, hair loss, which most women find the most distressing to deal with, increased risk of infection, so on and so forth. Now, you know, everything comes with a side effect, right, Chavi? You get into a car to go to your work. You don't think for a second that maximum deaths happen because of car accidents. Yeah, why? Because you're thinking of what the benefit of taking a car would be. Similarly, I tell all my patients, everything you do in life has an attendant risk. Standing in the kitchen and making chai for yourself carries the risk of burning yourself, right? So please understand that almost all side effects of treatment are reversible. Okay, but it is so important to talk to your doctor about it, to try and find ways and means of dealing with it. There are some side effects which may persist for life. Some women have stiffness and pain of the surgical scar for life, and there may not be very easy ways to overcome it. But look at the brighter side, you're cancer free. Okay, so that you have to keep in perspective all the time. So, if we have side effects, ke saath, so when we discuss treatments, I always tell patients, side effects we discuss later. Let's talk about the benefits first. And as it happens that sub ko sub side effect nahi honge, don't discuss all side effects even before you've started treatments. So say I keep discussing with you that your surgical scar mein stiffness hogi, but aapko kabhi hui nahi, and I ended up worrying you unnecessarily. So wait for the treatment to happen. See how your body takes it. Whatever side effect you have, please go and discuss it with the doctor. And there are ways around it. Okay. There are ways around almost all side effects of treatments. So uh, I think uh, I also felt that extreme sensitivity in the stitches. Uh, and uh, I did a lot of physiotherapy. My physiotherapist did a lot of these massages on the stitches, which were at that point like really, really, I can't even say painful, but it would give me like the odd yeah. sensation very 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 uncomfortable and i would scream and but now i'm so much better it's been four and a half months since my surgery uh and the other side effect that i also experienced was a lot of tightness in my you know where the lymph nodes were removed so much tightness i would say it's still not a hundred percent but it is a 99 percent there in four yes. and a half months so yes. that's amazing and uh, radiation kb the biggest side effect that i had was a lot of swelling in mm -hmm. the area and uh, I just again want to say that jo bhi tha sab settle ho gaya hai aur jo bacha hai wo bhi dhir -dhir settle ho jayega. I have no doubt about it. Uh, yeah, I feel a lot of side effects from the pill, the hormone therapy. Yeah, yeah. I think the worst side effect that I feel is mood swings, and yeah. uh, it's not the worst for me. It's the worst for my husband. Okay, family. So I always ask the husbands, uh, is your wife having mood swings because they are at the brunt of it. So see, yeah. um, uh, you know, like Chavi. Uh, like uh, your cancer was the hormone sensitive one about 70 percent 60 to 70 percent cancers are hormone sensitive hormone sensitive cancer ka matlab hai ki wo aapke female hormone ko kha ke badhta hai to isi liye hum log female hormones ko block karte hai so it's the same situation jo ki naturally in every woman's life you transition from pre-menopause to post menopause it is that situation and it's for every woman's life right and post menopause ka jo time hota hai us time pe mood swings hona baal patle hona uh, bloating feel hona uh, some women also experience weight gain although it's not directly linked but your body metabolism rate goes down a little bit so all these are side effects which are going to be there and here i really want to stress that leading a very very active life is the only way around these side effects okay because ye side effects to upar wale ne naturally waise hi har lady ke usme janam patri mein likh ke rakha hota hai that after 45 when you have menopause this is going to happen sadly mm -hmm. for a lot of women it happens quite early when they are in their 30s you know if they have cancer early so for them it is the most difficult but yeah. for older women it may not be that difficult again there are ways of dealing with it which are not always कि आपको अगर ये साइड इफेक्ट हो रहा है तो दूसरी कोई दवाई खानी पड़ेगी जिसका तीसरा कोई साइड इफेक्ट होगा ऐसा नहीं होता है समटाइम्स थिंग सिंपल थिंग्स लाइक मेडिटेशन एक्यूप्रेशर 
um, exercise, physiotherapy, um, you know, all these things really help, you know, go a long way in helping relieve you of those side effects. And as I say, Chavi, never lose focus that you're cancer free. And this is a very small price to pay for being cancer free. Absolutely. I still remember the days when I, when the surgery happened and I woke up, uh, I came to, my husband was there and the doctors had left. My surgery was seven hours long and uh, Mohit came to me and he said, uh, uh, doctor came to me and gave me an update. You're cancer free and that's it. And your surgery went really well and you're looking beautiful and everything is great. And I was like so relaxed and I thought ki ab yahan se, of recovery. Ye, matlab, peak ho gaya. It, is se zyada bura ab kuch hoga. Iske baad sab recovery hoga, achha hi hoga. Three okay. chairs. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, what is radiation therapy? Maine to karwai hai, but for my audience, uh, for the audience, what is radiation therapy and what are the side effects of radiation? Okay. So um, treatments for cancer, just to kind of give a quick overview for breast cancer, there are four things. There is surgery, obviously. There is chemotherapy. There is radiotherapy and there are tablets, which are hormone blockade tablets. Now, women who have very aggressive cancers or advanced cancers may need to take chemotherapy before they have surgery. And I want to mention that because, again, we have a mental block amongst patients saying, Ki aap pehle surgery karke kyun nikal dete? Aap pehle chemo kyun bol rahe ho? So, you know, understand if your doctor feels that's the right thing for you, there is a reason behind why the doctor is saying that to you. So, chemotherapy kya hoti hai ki IV drip ke ta, uh, se dawai di jati hai, jo ki cancer cells ko dhoon dhoon ke maarti hai. Okay, so that's chemotherapy. It acts on the whole body. All right. Surgery acts at the place where the cancer started from, which is the breast and the lymph nodes. Okay. Sometimes, if someone's cancer body mein kahin aur fell gaya ho, like liver, lung, not very often, but sometimes we may do surgery for that targeted spot where the cancer fell at. Okay. Then radiotherapy is again local treatment. It's not for the whole body. When we do surgery karte hai for the breast, अगर हमने ब्रेस्ट बचाई है तो बची हुई ब्रेस्ट में कैंसर फिर से ना बन जाए उसके लिए हम रेडिएशन देते हैं और रेडिएशन क्या करता है वो बेसिकली बर्न करता है सेल्स को सो एनी स्मॉल कैंसर सेल्स व्हिच कुड बी इन द ब्रेस्ट व्हिच आर नॉट सीन ऑन एनी फॉर्म ऑफ इमेजिंग आर बर्नड बाय रेडिएशन एंड दोस सेल्स व्हेन दे आर बर्नड बाय रेडिएशन दे रिड्यूस द रिस्क ऑफ द कैंसर कमिंग बैक सम टाइम्स फॉर सम वुमेन टोटल ब्रेस्ट रिमूवल के बाद भी रेडिएशन हमें देनी पड़ती है अगर वो कैंसर लिम्फ नोड्स तक बगल में फैल गया है या वो कैंसर बहुत बड़ा था साइज में चार सेंटीमीटर या उससे बड़ा या वो नीचे मसल को या स्किन को चिपका हुआ था तो उस केसेस में भी हम रेडिएशन देते हैं ताकि वो लोकल डिजीज जो है वो फिर से ग्रो ना हो रेडिएशन कई बार अगर बॉडी में कहीं और कैंसर फैला है जैसे ब्रेन में लंग में बोन में लिवर में भी तो हम उस लोकल स्पॉट को भी कई बार जलाने के लिए रेडिएशन देते हैं अब रेडिएशन जहां भी हम देंगे क्योंकि ये बेसिकली इट्स इट बर्न सेल्स सो इट माइट इवन बर्न हेल्दी टिश्यू सो जिन लोगों की रेडिएशन होती है तो स्किन पे जैसे यू नो अगर आपको कहीं गर्म ताव लग जाता है राइट तो कैसे बर्निंग सेंसेशन होती है तो स्किन has a sensation of being burnt for most women it's a very mild burn jo ki jo ointments or treatments doctor dete hain usse wo control ho jata hai but for some that burn might be very bad to the extent ki hame radiation kuch din rokni padti hai for the skin to recover before we restart radiation so again reversible side effect it is not a permanent side effect so remember that okay also sometimes radiation may lead to problems with swallowing some people get more acidity problems with swallowing again there are medicines that are given during treatment to reduce that digene jaise you know peene ke liye gels diye jate hain but again this is a side effect just the patient recover kar jate hain so as i say again keep focus of the fact that this is there to prevent the cancer from coming back again and all side effects are temporary and most are reversible and what is immunotherapy okay so see immunotherapy is the big buzzword everybody is talking about immunotherapy so immunotherapy we believe that you know god has given us 
सेल्स इन द बॉडी विच आर द इम्यून सिस्टम सेल्स राइट सो जैसे आपको इन्फेक्शन होती है आपकी बॉडी में वो इम्यून सेल्स डबल अप हो जाते हैं दे आर लाइक योर पुलिस फोर्स और दे आर लाइक द आर्मी इन योर बॉडी विच इज गोइंग टू फाइट द इन्वेडर एंड मेक यू फील बेटर राइट सिमिलरली देर आर सर्टन ट्रीटमेंट्स विच विल बूस्ट योर इम्यूनिटी टूवर्ड्स किलिंग कैंसर सेल्स ओके सो दैट इज वॉट इज इम्यूनोथेरेपी एंड ब्रेस्ट कैंसर में एक टाइप ऑफ कैंसर होता है जिसको हम ट्रिपल नेगेटिव ब्रेस्ट कैंसर बोलते हैं जो हॉर्मोन सेंसिटिव नहीं होता इम्यूनोथेरेपी का उसमें रोल है for patients we do certain tests to see whether they will respond to those drugs which are the immunotherapy drugs and then they can be given those drugs so the drug helps your body to make cells which then help to fight the cancer in simple terms that is what is immunotherapy okay so doctor now tell me ki diet ka kya role hota hai during uh, the treatment and also as post care so you know uh, chavi sadly what i have realized as allopaths we get taught disease medicine disease medicine right so the holistic bits about diet we just get told tell the patient to have a healthy diet and a healthy lifestyle right now what does that mean healthy diet and healthy lifestyle so you know we know diet is what sustains you right diet is what gives your body the immunity the strength you know to fight diseases and to lead a normal life i really want to mention here that there are too many fads about cancer related diets out there okay the moment a patient gets cancer i know the first thing they do when they go home they google is what should i eat and what should i not eat and i tried googling to see what my patients are reading so the first thing that comes up is sugar mat lo milk mat lo you know things like that so i can tell you there are no definite proven um you know diets that will completely um help a cancer patient but whatever is there is very sensible so when we say don't take sugar it's not that that the, the reason that people give is cancer feeds on sugar so if you eat sugar the cancer will grow that is not really? true. yes oh my god you haven't heard that that is the first thing you hear on google <laughs> because that is the first thing we hear so so what we have to understand is that whatever you eat gets converted to sugar because at your cellular level glucose is what gives the energy to run your cells so when we say don't eat sugar we just mean processed sugars okay yeah. it's good to take uh, you know your honey your khand your natural sugars rather than the sulfur wali white shiny sugar right that is something that we say so don't don't kill yourself thinking ab to main kabhi sugar nahi kha sakti kyunki mujhe cancer ho gaya that's a big myth secondly there is a huge thing out there chavi about milk now mm-hmm. it's very difficult as a doctor to say you know to comment upon this but there was this study that was done which showed that chinese women who hardly have dairy products because they are dependent on soya and things like that that they have lesser cancers than the western women whose entire diet is dairy based from yogurts to cheese to milk right so it's not the milk that fuels the cancer but it's how the milk reaches you how much hormone has been fed to the cow to get that milk to you you know so again there is no definite link but what we say is in moderation it is okay yeah. and as indians to be told tum paneer mat khao ghee mat lo dahi mat lo you know that kills us it's it's a completely not sensible so for a cancer diet it has to be a sensible diet you have to in- include a lot of raw vegetables and fruits in your diet okay 30% should be raw your diet so your plate should be the color of a rainbow sadly as indians hamari diet ab kya ho gayi hai aloo hai dal hai roti hai done that's not healthy make sure you're eating a lot of vegetables over fried over steamed over cooked are not good so make sure what you're eating is lightly sauteed and mm. also when we are on the subject of diet i definitely want to mention preserved foods foods that come out of packets foods yeah. that have a hundred ingredients written behind the packet none of it you can either pronounce or recognize so eat healthy eat fresh eat local eat in moderation that's the biggest advice i can give on diet because otherwise we'll get into such a slippery slope of soya is not good milk is not good that is not good that's not healthy at all right so even during my radiation and my recovery from the surgery 
थोड़े से चेंजेस मैंने भी अपनी डाइट में किए थे शुगर वाइट शुगर कम्प्लीटली एलिमिनेटेड मिल्क फॉर दैट टाइम कम्प्लीटली एलिमिनेटेड माय ऑन कॉलेज सेट सोए भी नहीं आप खा सकते हो तो न्यूट्रेला सोए प्रोडक्ट एवरीथिंग कम्प्लीटली एलिमिनेटेड ही सेट डोंट ईट पालक ही सेट डोंट ईट मेथी एंड आई वॉज नॉट अलाउड रेड मीट and i included a lot of cooling things in my diet so that you know to control the acidity uh, and i increased my protein intake because i had stopped all artificial form of protein so these are few changes that i made during my recovery and uh, then slowly slowly i've gotten back to these things sugar is like 10% of what i was eating earlier <laughs> milk is like 10% of what i was consuming yeah. but little bit here and there so moderation so you know yes. if you have i tell my patients if somebody offers you a pastry and you really want to eat it please don't kill your heart and say yeah, to me mujhe cancer hai to main nahi kha sakti that is absolutely wrong and can i tell you if you look at the uh, the how ayurveda uh, talks about a diet and then you look at the western diet th- there there are so many contradictory things in both of them whereas you know ayurveda will say tomato mat khao but the western diet says it's rich in leucopene so you should take it because that's an anti cancer now absolutely. when you talk of soya i really want to mention something here right so if you talk of soya it is believed that you know women who have hormone sensitive cancers should not eat foods which have phytoestrogens which are plant based estrogens and soya is one of the biggest uh, food item so tell me one thing if a chinese woman gets cancer what does she eat how can she avoid soya in her diet you know so these yeah. there are there is enough literature out there which yeah. is- says soya is not healthy and i can find you enough literature which says soya if given mm-hmm. in the right time at, is actually good so yes. don't get into don't fall in the trap of oh my god you know look i i see a lot of patients when they when they get diagnosed with cancer you know food is meant to be your comfort and sadly they look at food and think mujhe isse to nahi cancer ho gaya isko khane se cancer to nahi wapas aa jayega and there's nothing sadder than that so please food is still your 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 rock support you know so if you feel like eating that tali hui puri when you know like during chemo a lot of patients keep saying hame golgappe khane ka man kar raha i tell them the day your chemo finishes make sure you go out and have your golgappas you know so yeah. don't don't kill your cravings but eat in moderation and i think that's the most sensible advice that i think I give. most most important is ki agar aapko kuch side effects feel ho rahe hain body mein so just yeah. include the diet which is going to help you I manage those side body, effects you know, better that's right start to listen to your body yeah you will realize that you will be leading such a healthy life so if in the evening your body is telling you i'm not up for dinner but sab log baith ke tandoori chicken kha rahe hain to aapne bhi plate bhar ke kha li then you're going to be miserable and chavi i really do want to mention something here which uh, when we are on the subject of food is something which is actually proven um, in mm-hmm. in medicine is that intermittent fasting is yeah. going to have a beneficial effect for women who have been diagnosed and treated for breast cancer especially the hormone sensitive one okay so what intermittent fasting does is that it reduces levels of insulin like growth factor there's a there's a chemical and that is known to increase inflammation in your body so if you have a longer period of fasting so you know intermittent fasting raat ko karo sham ko 5 6 baje khaya agle din then give a 12 to 14 if you can to 16 hour gap it is known to help you recover from the cancer and maybe even reduce the risk of the cancer coming back so intermittent oh. fasting is actually medically proven to help cancer patients okay that's if amazing you are diabetic or if you're prone to severe acidity if you stay uh, fasting for too long please do not follow this advice at all i think again you can start by you know with 10 hours and then take it up and listen to your body and see yeah, how it goes to you eat. and try to sleep well it is so yeah. important i cannot stress the importance of sleep you know there was a nurse who took nhs to court because she done night duties for so many years and she developed breast cancer and it is known that a disruption in your uh, circadian rhythm circadian rhythm which means yeah. you follow the rhythm of light and dark so if yeah. you are awake for longer periods of time in the night it affects your whole body immunity and it may lead to increased risk of cancer and in this day and age of mobile phones and laptops i really want to stress especially for those of you who have young girls 
please ensure that you're limiting their screen time and that they're getting good eight, nine hours sleep in the dark without the light of their camera charger, their phone charger, and all of that. This is just basic common sense. Please, this is so, so important. You know, when we talk of cancer being a lifestyle disease, and these things are surrounding us now. You can't be without your phone. You can't be without your laptops. But learn to, you know, stay away from them for at least that eight, nine hours of sleep time that you get. Great. So now I'm going to move to some of the audience questions. Uh, this one is from uh, Sumiti Malhotra. She says, what if mother who's diagnosed with cancer had negative BRCA genes and still daughter has it? Yeah. Does she also have negative BRCA genes? So you know what, that's such a brilliant question. So for all the cancers that we know have a family history risk, we are able to identify the abnormal gene in only 15 to 20% cases. In about 80% cases, we are not able to identify the abnormal gene. So sometimes even if the mother is BRCA negative, you know, the, the, the child or the daughter could get uh, breast cancer. So we have now identified other genes other than BRCA. So sometimes the doctor will tell you not to do just BRCA 1 and 2 testing. They'll tell you to do what is called a multi-gene testing. And it's best to do this after talking to a genetic counselor and not randomly walking somewhere and giving your blood for genetic tests. So even negative BRCA, so yes, it, if the mother is BRCA negative, the implication for you is that and you are BRCA negative, the implication for you is that you don't have to take extreme measures of risk reduction, like removing your breasts and removing your ovaries, even before you develop a cancer. But the fact that you still need to do regular checkups once a year, that remains. Hmm. So uh, is this like a commonly available test? You can get it done everywhere or are they only like... So sadly, sorry, it is so commonly available that women randomly go and get it done. Okay. And then uh, there is some abnormality in it, which even a doctor cannot guide you on what to do if there is an abnormality like that. And it really causes a lot of confusion. Never get a genetic test done unless you've spoken to a genetic counselor, unless there is a valid reason to do a genetic test. And unless the right genetic test has been ordered, it is so important to understand that. Okay. Now, uh, Nidhi Benipuri wants to know, should both the tests, MRI and mammography be done? And how often? For the last four years, I've been getting mammography done every year. I'm 45 years of age. Excellent. So most women will not require an MRI as a routine part of follow-up. A yearly mammogram and when needed an ultrasound and always a clinical checkup. So a clinical checkup and a mammogram are extremely important. MRI is needed only if A, you have a very strong family history, B, you have a personal history of breast cancer and that was not detected on a mammogram. So we need to do an MRI to keep a follow-up. See if there is a discrepancy between what a mammo shows and what I clinically feel. So if clinically feel I feel a five centimeter lump and the mammo says one centimeter, then why is this discrepancy there? Then I need to do an MRI. And women who have a strong family history risk of breast cancer need to do MRIs more often. Not as a routine. The routine woman from age 40 onwards, all she needs to do is a clinical checkup by a doctor once a year and a mammogram. Okay. Uh, now, before we close the session, I want to ask you one last question, and that is, how should friends and family approach a person who has breast cancer? So, again, these are all my favorite topics. I'm so glad you asked this question. See, when a patient is diagnosed with breast cancer, she's obviously living the hell that she has to live during diagnosis and treatment. But the family, the carers, sometimes lead more of a difficult time than the patient does because they have to see their loved one going through the treatments. They have to coordinate their going to the hospital. They may have to take leave so many times just so that they are able to be with their loved one. You know, so carers, in fact, in the West, it's a huge topic of the kind of support that doctors and the government need to give to somebody who's caring for a relative with breast cancer. And we have to be very sensitive to their needs. But coming back to the Indian scenario, the first thing I want to say to family and friends of anybody who's detected with cancer, please be open. Do not send your doctor chits to say, don't tell my patient she has cancer. 
you know and i get that very often and i tell everybody if you are not going to use the word cancer confidently around the patient who has cancer they will always feel scared because they'll see the fear in your eyes so the first thing that relatives have to do is to take it easy is to calm down because if you look scared the patient is double scared so you have to be that rock solid support and if you feel that you're getting psychologically affected please seek out help there are counselors in every hospital that counsel carers also that's very important to do also a patient who has cancer needs a lot of support psychologically physically and that must be provided by family and friends never tell them stories of are uske sath ye hua tha to bura hua aisa hua tha to waisa hua please that ho high mentality that we as indians like to create please don't create that it's just cancer shrug your shoulders off there are treatments available for it and i tell all my patients relatives if my patient when she goes home is not allowed to get up and make a tea a cup of tea for herself i'm going to be seriously annoyed because you will be able to do a lot of things yourself when the family starts telling them tum bimar ho tum mat utho that really affects the morale okay so if the patient is feeling up to getting up and going to work or doing work around the house do not stop them ask your doctor to what extent she is allowed to do it and allow her to do that so that kind of support is really really needed don't be afraid be the strong support seek out help if you need you know if you are a husband and you don't have support at home to take her to chemotherapy or you're facing financial difficulties because you are having to take too much leave ask your family ask your extended family ask your friends ask for help there is no shame in doing that it's very important to understand that great i think i'm just going to end the session by saying that as a cancer patient whatever you go through physically is one thing but whatever you go through mentally is completely another and whatever you're going through physically is beyond your control because you are it's not even like you have options you're just you're just being told by your doctor that this this is the course of treatment and you have to follow it but mentally you do have options so you can it's it's upon you whether you can make your a uh, treatment a happy one or a sad one and i think in any given scenario i would choose happiness over sadness any day because it makes everything easier or jo hai wo hai jaisa hona hai wo hona hai we can only you know brace it with a smile and i hope that all cancer patients do that uh, and thank you so much dr kanchan for joining us and you know it again i am also getting deja vu now because it was i think 15 or days before my diagnosis that we did that we had done the first session yes yes <laughs> yeah and because of that i was also like okay i have to be aware about uh, uh, breast cancer and uh, thank you so much for again uh, imparting these and thank you wisdom. for being such a good and positive example in the community chavi i'm sure every doctor blesses you when they see you out there talking about it openly because i know looking at you and listening to you may make the journey of so many of my patients easier so three cheers for you god bless you always it's been lovely talking to you today thank you thank you so much i hope the viewers also enjoyed this session and took back something uh, with them and i hope all the women who are watching are going to definitely not neglect the importance of self examination and on that note we'll see you again next week this is us signing out love and peace from us to you take care